I see that is okay. There you go. We have four participants. Great. Um, so without further ado, um, let's let's begin. Well, first of all, I want I want to thank everyone for attending um, my presentation on CSX Flexbox and versus Floats. I will also thank Elizabeth for hosting and facilitate, facilitating this presentation. So I'll try to keep it short. I know uh, it's it's probably late for some of you guys. So yeah, um, let's jump right into it. So um, today's topics, uh, I want to give everyone um, an overview of uh, floats and flexbox. Um, and I won't go into detail what they do um, exactly. Um, you can read those um, and learn those by yourself. Um, the, the main takeaway of this presentation is to show you various use cases that you can implement Flexbox or Floats um, to more easily position content and uh, manage your CSS. CSS can, it's a really broad topic, so I would narrow it down to a few uh, more practical use cases to, so that I can demonstrate to you how these uh, tools can help you um, work better with CSS. Okay, so uh, floats, um, in general, floats um, can enable you to remove an element out of its normal flow. Now what this means is that an element that, uh, that's positioned normally as a block element, you can shift it all the way to the left or all the way to the right um, within its parent container. So, and why do we need to do this? Um, it's, it's a very simple reason. It's because uh, all the browsers back in maybe 2000s or HTML back then was a lot simpler and people just want to, you know, display an article with maybe images and text. And, and they, they, they probably want the text to wrap around the image. So floats solve that problem. You know, it allows text or any other content to wrap around um, floated elements. So uh, there's no doubt it's best used for positioning images in line within, uh, with the text or a paragraph. So this is a very simple example. As you can see that we have two pink boxes up there. Um, if we float two elements to the left, you can see that they stack uh, right next to each other. And then you can also float an element to the right. Um, if you notice the blue box, the top right corner. Now, um, shifting attention to the bottom here, we can see that uh, there is element that's floated left. And then there is uh, the bottom right box here is floated to the right. Now, notice that I have also a clear property set to left. Now, what this does is it, um, it clears the float. That means that any element has that property will not occupy um, any space that has a floated element. So in this case, the right floated element will be pushed all the way down um, below um, the very bottom of the left floated element. You can see that um, they sort of, the right floated element's top border lines up with the bottom border of the, the floated left element. So this is a very simple use case. Um, now, I also want to show you a, a trick that we, we frequently use or occasionally use in CSS is that we can prevent full elements from uh, wrapping around text. Uh, as you can see that the section on the right here, uh, we have an image. And you notice that the paragraph does not wrap around the image. And you can see that there's empty space right underneath uh, the image. Now, this is a trick um, which is useful. Um, I'll come back to this later, and, and I'll show you why it's useful. Um, but here, I'm just going to show you a quick and easy way to do it is to set the overflow property to hidden. Um, now, if you have any questions at this point, uh, feel free to type in the Q&A box. And, um, 
I will try to answer to the best of my ability. And if there's any questions I couldn't answer, I would follow up or feel free to um, Slack, message me on Slack or email me um, so I can answer them later. Okay, so I won't go into detail how the overflow property works, um, but um, just remember that it, uh, it prevents the floated elements from wrapping around other contents. So, okay. Um, so now moving on to Flexbox. Now why Flexbox is useful? Um, now I'm, although I'm comparing Flexbox versus floats, it's, uh, it's not necessarily an apple to apple comparison. There are two different tools altogether. Um, but clearly Flexbox is a newer tool. So um, I'm, going to, I'm going to go into more into detail on you know, how you can make it work, what's its best use for. So when using Flexbox, uh, we can very easily align items within a container. Um, for example, we want to align items to the vertical line, an item to the top, the bottom, or in the center of the container. You can very easily use that with Flexbox. Also, if, if you have multiple elements within um, a Flex container, you can very easily stretch or shrink a particular item um, based on a specified proportion um, or um, you know, unit, which I'll go into that in detail later. Also, Flexbox allows you to position items as a row, as a column. So um, in this presentation, I'm going to show you examples that, um, that we use the flex direction as a row. Now, I'm not going to go into uh, the column part because um, that's, it's pretty rare that we need to use Flexbox to align items in a column manner. So, so I, I will not include that in this presentation. Okay, so Flexbox is best used for scan guess containing layouts. Okay, so for for those of you who are new to Flexbox or you have probably haven't used it before, it's uh, the the idea behind it is very simple. So, firstly, you have a parent container which is um, the, the blue box here, the rounded with the rounded borders. And then you have, you have items, which are children element of the parent container. Um, now to work with flex, Flexbox, uh, you need to know a couple of properties that, uh, that, that has to be used with the parent container and a few par properties that has to be used with the uh, items. Um, We'll just refer the child elements as items here for, for, for uh, clarity. Okay, so um, this is just uh, to give you a very basic uh, introduction on how to use the, the properties on the parent container. So first of all, we have the display property and then Setting this display property to the flex value enables you to use flex properties, um, flex properties on the uh, the items and also the container itself. Properties such as justified content here um, and align items allow you to manipulate how items are positioned within the parent container. So for justified content, it's, it's very commonly used. Um, and I'll explain how it works briefly. So justified content allows you to uh, um, position content uh, based on how the remaining, sp remaining spaces between the items are distributed. So if I have justified content space between, as you can see, uh, the top, the very top, box here as an example, you can see that the space um, that uh, there are spaces between the items, but there are no spaces on the left or the right edge of the parent container. 
Now, in order to to have some breathing room between the left and right edge of the parent container and items, I would specify the justify content uh, property to space around. Now, there's also other values like space evenly, flex start, flex end. Those are um, less uh, you, you often less often come across those. Um, but of course, feel free to experiment it, uh, with those. Okay, now for align items. So align items allow us to determine how items should be vertically aligned. Now, when I say vertically aligned, um, it's true when flex direction is row, but it's not when it's column. Again, um, we won't go into, uh, we won't go into uh, the, the example where we align items as a column. So I'm just going to show you that aligned items, we can either specify it as center, uh, flex start, which is all the island elements will start at the top of the parent container or flex end, which the end at the bottom of the parent container or stretch. As you can see, the line, when I specify line items as, as stretch, the items fill up the entire height of the parent container. Um, now, um, at this point, does anyone have any question? Okay, so if not, we'll move on to the properties for the items. Okay, so for the items, I'm just gonna give you um, one property here, which you can quickly use. Um, I won't go into other properties because you just basically need to know this one to probably work with Flexbox. So uh, the property is called Flex, or it's actually a shorthand for a number of properties, Flex Grow, Flex Spaces, and so on. But using Flex itself will work. So what it does is it allows certain particular element to, to stretch um, based on a proportion. Now that proportion is a number that you specify. As you can see in this example here, when I specify flex one on the left most box, you can see that it's only half the width of the box that has a flex two property and a third of the width of the flex three box. So using this, you can, you can very easily manage how a certain item should stretch or shrink. And knowing all these properties, we can begin with our examples here. So um, yeah, again, feel free to put in any questions if you have. Um, I'll try to answer them. Okay, so I'm gonna go through three use cases here. First, I want to demonstrate how you can use folds or flexbox in a multi-column layout. For floats, um, we pretty much just have to use negative margins. Um, now, like it or not, it's uh, it, it's part of you know, part of part of the way, so that we can position elements properly when using floats. Um, however, using flexbox is a lot easier because we can just specify the display property to flex, and then the the items within it or the, the sections within um, the parent container will take care take take care of itself. So. To demonstrate this, um, I've prepared an example here. Um, so this is what we are trying to achieve. We want to basically position uh, three columns. We want to position the header to the left, the main content uh, at the center, and the footer to the end. And we want to fix the width of both the header and the footer. Now, um, I'm just going to show you real quick here, using floats, um, this is how you would do it. Um, I know it's, uh, it, it, it can seem pretty complicated, but I'm gonna show you why we need all these properties just in a second. Now, everyone here should see my text editor. Um, 
to the right and then also my browser here which is um, which is the HTML that's rendered here uh, without the complete CSS yet. So I'm going to show you um, so first of all we start with the elements they are positioned um, with a block display value and then they all stack on top of each other as you notice. So first of all I want to when using floats, um, I can very easily float an element to the left. Now if I do this and refresh the page, you know you, you notice that header is float to the left, but the main content wraps around the header. To, um, now I don't want the main content to wrap around the header. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna float main content to the left. Now what happens is that footer becomes weird. So I'm gonna float the footer to the right. Okay, now you notice that the footer disappears. It's because it's right at the bottom. The reason why this happens is because main content takes up more, way more space than our head and footer. So it tends to, you know, just push everything else down here. Um, now, not a problem. Um, so what I can do is I can set, I want to set my header to width of 160 pixels, for example. Um, how many pixels is arbitrary, just for this, this example. And then I set my footer to 140 pixels, okay? Now the trick here to, uh, to line this header right next to the main content is to actually use negative margins. Now notice that um, if I set a negative margin to the left of 160 pixels, when I refresh the page, you can see the header element completely disappears. It's because my header element is actually outside of my viewport here, outside of my browser window, all the way to the left. Um, I'll do this to the footer so you can see what I mean. So again, margin right of negative 140 pixels, which is the full width of the footer. You can see that my footer is actually pushed all the way to the right. That's how useful my next margin is. Now, um, this problem won't go away because I want my header to be viewable within my browser window, same as my footer. So um, in this case, I wrapped my three columns in a div with an ID of columns. Um, now this uh, columns, I can specify the left and right margin so that I can actually shrink everything so that my browser window displays the header and the footer element. Margin left, 160 pixels. Margin right, 140 pixels. And notice if I refresh this page, um, it's nicely positioned, okay? Now, one last thing is that I want my header and footer to actually stretch all the way down to the very bottom of my browser window. I can very easily do that with minimum height property. I'll set it with 100 view height and then do the same for the footer. Now 100 VH means uh, it's 100% of my browser window. So if I refresh that, you notice that it's, it's working, right? Now there's one problem. If I zoom in all the way in or uh, sufficiently enough until I have a until I have a scroll down to see the rest of the content, you notice that there's white spaces on the left and right. This is because the uh, the minimum height property of with the value of 100 view height doesn't take into account scrolling. So if my uh, content width goes beyond 100% of my browser height, 
it, it doesn't it doesn't stretch beyond that. So um, there are a couple of ways to fix that, but I won't go into how to do that with floats. It involves using absolute positions, um, and that's not the point of this presentation here. But I can show you how how to solve this using flexbox. So I'm gonna undo everything here, and we are back where we are. Um, now, to use Flexbox, I can very easily do that by just setting the parent container to display Flex as we, as I shown you earlier, in the parent containers property. So when I set this to display Flex, notice that it's it's like magic, right? Uh, it automatically takes care of positioning. So my header, main content, and footer aligns nicely next to, right next to each other. Um, now I just have to um, set the width and the minimal height of the header and footer so that it actually fits to my browser window. And if I zoom in all the way, you can see that my header and footer actually stretches to uh, fit the parent container. So Flexbox works like a charm here. Um, it's not to say that you can't use floats, but Flexbox is definitely a way to go. Um, especially if you have more than three or, you know, if you want to align contents differently, Flexbox is the way to go. Okay, so um, so that was the first example. Um, now we're gonna move on to, let me check Q&A, okay, no Q&A. So I'm gonna move on to using Flexbox versus floats in list items. Um, I first figured out, I first found that, oh, you know, List items can be tricky, especially when you try to position items within list items. Um, for floats, you can't just use the vertical align property because um, it, it generally doesn't affect floated elements. They kind of vertically align the way they like it, and you have no control on that. Instead, we have to specify the line height property which is a little bit troublesome, but it is achievable. The Flexbox align items property uh, will help you with that. So to, to give you the, an example, I have this example set up here. We have, in here we have a to-do list, we have two list items, um, and you notice that I have a padding of 10 pixels and then, well, of course I need to set the line height to 30 pixels. Also, I have three buttons that I want to push them all the way to the right of each of the list items. Excuse me. So, in order to properly position the, the floats, we have to specify a line height. Um, if not, I'll show you why. So, okay, so this is the same example here, rendered in, uh, in my browser with my HTML here. So, so we're gonna open up the developer tools. Um, now, if you're not familiar with the developer tools, don't worry about that. Um, it's just a re really easy way to inspect each of these elements and see what properties they, they have. And we can change it on the fly and see what it does. So first of all, we have our list item, right? So remember that I said that uh, we need a line height property for this? So what if we don't have line height? You can see that our buttons are kind of, they don't, they don't align properly vertically, right? And setting vertical line uh, to middle, doesn't work because uh, first of all, I'm setting it in the parent container and then also setting it on the floats, float element itself 
won't really work. So I have to calculate what the line height should be. In this case, is 30 pixels. For the button element, you notice that the buttons are actually in reverse in our markup here. The delete button comes first, and then the edit button comes second, and the info button comes third. Now, why is this case? Why do we need to um, mark it up in reverse? Well, um, it's because that it's because our elements are all floated right. Uh, notice that if I uncheck the float property here, if I uncheck this, you can see that the elements go back where it was originally ordered. But if I float all of the elements to the right, they are reversed in order. So I kind of need to reverse that in order to work. Also, notice I have a line height property here. If I uncheck this, um, the buttons goes back to its original size and it shrinks. And so I need my line height property again. Um, well, positioning elements with floats this way, it it's possible and it's not extremely complicated, but I would much rather use Flexbox and I, sh I, and I will show you why. So using Flexbox, um, you can see that I have the same list item but now I can specify uh, the display property as flex, and then I can justify content so that the elements actually um, line up with a space in between. Also, the third property here, align items, allows me to position items vertically at the center. Um, for simplicity, I would uh, I would put all the buttons in the, a div element, and then I can set that property to display flex again, so that all the buttons they line up, um, they just line up perfectly. So, using Flexbox, you know, you don't have to specify or calculate the line height anymore. You can just trust that it, it works its magic, you know. Um, and I can show you, okay, back to our HTML here. So, so again, um, why we use justify content property? Notice that if I uncheck that, all the elements, um, they would snap to the left, right? Because in like block elements, they don't, they don't align themselves uh, automatically. So. I would have to use justify content space between. And align items allow me to align items vertically at the center. And also I have a div which contains all of the buttons. Now the buttons can be in order now because I don't have to rely on floats. And you notice that I use display of flex. Now why is it so? If I don't, you notice that the buttons kind of just um, go back to their original size and um, they don't align properly. So using the display flex usually will give us what we want. Um, if not, I mean, there are a few properties that can help you to probably do that. One is the align items stretch. Um, stretch is basically basically uh, lets your button fills up the entire height of the parent container. Now, since we also have a padding, it doesn't fill up. We have, yeah, because we have a padding in our list item. item. Okay. Okay, moving on, we want to, okay, this is our, my, this is our last example here. So the last, last example, which I'm going to show you, is uh, input boxes. So why input boxes? Basically, you, if you have uh, input boxes, sometimes you want it to stretch or shrink when the user 
you know, when they expand the browser width, or if you want to create a responsive layout, mm -hmm. um, then Flexbox really helps in this case. It is very possible to achieve this results. However, you have to manually set the width um, of each of the uh, input element or its uh, wrapper. And then now we actually uh, going to show you that the overflow hidden property here is useful when we're using floats. For Flexbox, however, we can very easily use the flex property on each uh, input element or its um, or the wrapper around it to uh, to specify how much space it should fill up. Now again, I come came up with this very simple example here, um, which I'm going to show you. Using floats, you basically have to manually specify the width of um, the input fields. So you can see that I wrapped the inputs um, within the div element, and then I have to set the width to you know two thirds and then one third, and then to set the display property to inline block so that they line up side by side. Also, we have um, now the DT element wraps the uh, the label, and I float that to the left. And then the DD element here, I specify the overflow plot property to hit it. Now uh, you may ask why I do this. Um, it's it's because if I don't use the overflow hidden, the DD element actually goes underneath the DT element. And I'm going to show you how it uh, how it's actually result in uh, oops. Let me close this up in my render here. So so remember, I have a DD element that has overflow property of hidden. Notice that if I uncheck that, it goes underneath it. It's because my floated element DT wraps around my DD. However, my DD contains an input which is probably going to take up more space than, um, than the remaining space here. So it's just going to wrap around it and go below my label. OK, so I'm going to recheck that, it fixes it, and then I would set my input to 100% width. Because if I don't do that, you notice that it kind of just goes crazy. <laughs> um, so um, setting 100% width on input fills up my DD element, which then I can use the DD element uh, to position the input. Now this is kind of like a responsive layout. Um, you can see that as I, as I expand my uh, browser width, my input box shrink or expand accordingly. Um, and now I'm going to show you how you how to do this with Flexbox, which is the last example here. With Flexbox, it's um, it requires some thought. But again, the process is similar. First of all, we specify the display property as flex, align items as center, so that items actually align themselves center. Excuse me. And then we want to justify content so that they have the space between. Now, the justify content isn't necessary here because we don't have um, spaces in between them. Um, but I'm just showing you here just to remain, um, just for consistency. And then for the DD element, which wraps around the input, we can specify how much we want the container to stretch. Okay, so so I'm going to inspect my element here and show you why I need to uh, 
why I need to do all these things. So again, align items, in this case, it doesn't really affect that much, but I'm just going to uh, use it. And then we can totally ignore the justify content here because we don't have any spaces in between each of the items here. Now, for using Flexbox, I don't need to wrap, um, I don't need to wrap each input fields in the div. Um, compared to using floats. It's because that I can align all of the items within one uh, parent container. Now, um, I'm going to show you why would we need the flex property here. So if I uncheck the flex property here, you notice that the um, the input box kind of behaves a little bit weird here. It's because if I uncheck the flex property, the input box width um, will go back to its original width. And then it's a fixed, since it's a fixed width, it doesn't go and shrink. And it kind of just takes up um, how much, however much space it wants. So using a flex property with a value of one, ensures that I stretch it um, so it fills up the remaining spaces um, because the default is actually zero. And if I put zero here, oops, um, I guess we shouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. Now you may be wondering why uh, the, uh, the input sizes here are equal compared to what we did last time and with the floats, they are not. It's because that we specify the flex property as one. Now, if we want the input boxes to have different widths, um, we would, oh, here's my markup. Okay, so if we want them to have different widths, we're gonna specify a different class for both of the inputs. So for the left input, I just added class, um, so it has a class of flex two thirds and the right input, I would specify it as flex of one third. And then now I can specify a number. So if I refresh this, you notice that um, the input box on the left, which has a flex property of value of five, takes up more space than the input box on the right, which only has a flex property of two. Now the numbers are arbitrary, but it shows that um, flex box um, tries to shrink or extend each element according to uh, the correct proportion. It doesn't always do that, but it tries to. So you can see the left input box is actually five times wider now if I set this to one. Okay, so um, and so yeah, if I shrink or expand, you can see that it works properly. So yeah, um, I think that's it for my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to, uh, to just message me on Slack and I'll try to answer them. Um, if not, I hope you guys enjoy my talk and yeah, I'll see you guys around later. Thank you.